Teddy Roosevelt 2019 is not monetized. Please like, subscribe, and share so more viewers will see this information. Thank you. Tulsi Gabbard, Congresswoman from Hawaii, Democratic National Committee Vice Chair, has been at odds with her boss, DNC Chair Debbie Wasserman Schultz, for months over the Democratic presidential debate schedule. Congresswoman, you're here because you have an announcement to make regarding your position at the DNC. Tell us. Uh, well, first of all, I am resigning from the DNC so that I can support Bernie Sanders for president. I'd like to tell you why. Now to an astonishing groundswell of hipster support tonight in New York City for presidential candidate Bernie Sanders. Momentum growing, but can it be counted on in the end? Here's ABC's David Wright. Tonight in the heart of Greenwich Village, there are a lot of people here tonight. Bernie, Bernie, Bernie Palooza. Tonight, about 27,000 Sanders supporters packed Washington Square Park, one of Sanders' biggest crowds yet. Tonight's rally, a star-studded affair. Oh, man, it's amazing to be in Washington Square Park. I'm the designated hype man, Bernie Sanders. Like a rock concert. A stark contrast to the scene up in the Bronx. To the scene up in the Bronx. To the scene up in the Bronx. To the scene up in the Bronx, where Hillary Clinton had her own rally tonight. Wow, I am so happy. What the hell was that? Happy to be back here. Judging from these two events, you'd be tempted to think this was a Bernie Sanders slam dunk. The big focus here, reaching out to millennials. You must like Bernie Sanders a lot. But a big problem Sanders faces here, can his supporters actually vote here? If you're a first time voter, you had to register a month ago. And if you're changing parties, you had to do it all the way back in October. So while Bernie Sanders has a lot of supporters, a lot of them may not be able to vote in the New York primary. Last week, I covered the blatant election fraud in the Democratic primary. And that seemed to, uh, it, it upset, it upset a lot of people, you know, it, right, <laughs> right in here. It, they didn't, they didn't feel good. So this week, to make it more enjoyable, as I talk about it, I'm gonna put adorable cut puppies up on this screen there. And I think we'll get through this. We'll get through this together, you know? <laughs> so the exit polls don't seem to match up to the voting machine tallies. Isn't that odd? And the voting machines all seem, <laughs> all seem to tend towards Hillary Clinton, while the exit polls all seem to tend towards Bernie Sanders. Isn't that odd? <laughs> and in nine of those contests, those exit polls were so far off, they were way outside the margin of error. The odds of that happening by chance are one in 90 million. Isn't that odd. <laughs> okay, that, that's your last puppy, so, so take it in. Take it in. You need to internalize it. Now, now I want to I wanna look at, at one instance where we know something egregious happened. Over 100,000 voters were accidentally, accidentally knocked off the rolls in Brooklyn, New York. Isn't that odd? And I imagine it's not that easy to accidentally purge 100,000 people off the rolls. I don't think the, the, the clerk at the Board of Elections is like sitting at a panel with one large red button that keeps the election clean and another large red-orange button that rigs the election for Hillary Clinton. I don't, I don't think that's how it works. <laughs> But this certainly has nothing to do with Hillary Clinton's campaign. No, the person to blame is Chief Clerk Diane Hazlett Rudiano, who is now getting booted for her error. Although, if it was truly just a, a simple mistake, then why would she be fired? Isn't that odd? <laughs> but in order to show she did it to help Hillary Clinton, we'd have to show she's had some kind of contact with Clinton or Clinton supporters. And, and that just, that just isn't good. Oh, what's this on this newspaper from 2014 that I always keep by my desk? <laughs> what? 
I, li I like my newspapers, old and wrinkly, like my men. <laughs> I don't know what that meant. I don't know what that meant. <laughs> In September of 2014, the Wall Street Journal wrote about a dilapidated Upper West Side brownstone that was sold to a developer. The place's floors had collapsed and stonework cracked. Over the years, neighbors complained about graffiti, garbage, and rats. One neighbor even, even put up a rat crossing sign. Anyway, <laughs> this, place, this place is a dump. Nobody would ever buy. Oh. The property sold for $6.6 million, $1.1 million over the 2013 market value. Isn't that ah? Uh? <laughs> the owner of the home is one Diane Hazlett Rudiano, who paid $5,000 for it in 1976. That's the same name as that other person. <laughs> that is odd. She wasn't even trying to sell the place. She was, she was just approached by a buyer offering six and a half million dollars. Maybe the buyer was a rat collector. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? But alas, this still has nothing to do with the Clinton camp. Oh, wait. <laughs> the buyer of the property was an investment group headed by Dana Lowey Lutway, daughter of U.S. Representative Nita Lowey, a superdelegate for one Hillary. <laughs> Isn't that hot? Hell no, till the no, no, no. Hell till the no, hell till the no, till the no, no, no. no. It says, it says here in this newspaper, which has now switched from the Wall Street Journal to the Daily News, <laughs> that <laughs> it says that when they asked Lowey's chief of staff whether there was any potential situation at all in which Nita Lowey would switch her support from Clinton to Sanders, her chief of staff replied, absolutely not. None at all? None at all? Like Hillary could walk up on the podium with a pig's head on a necklace, like a Flavor Flav clock, and, <laughs> and Lowey would still be down for that! Isn't that... So the Board of Elections chief clerk accidentally deletes 120,000 voters in a major primary 18 months after selling a completely destroyed house where bed bugs go to plan their revolution, <laughs> selling it for $6.6 .6 million to the daughter of a diehard Clinton supporter. Color me pink and tickle me stupid. That is odder than a snowstorm in July. <laughs> that is odder than a porcupine with a balloon. That is odder than a porn star at a debutante ball. That is odder than Shia LaBeouf acting not odd. That is odder than a river otter. That's all I got. That's all I got. If you would like to know who really stole the election, it wasn't Russia. It wasn't Russia. I'm telling you right now, mark my words, it wasn't Russia buying ads on Facebook or Twitter uh, or colluding with Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump. What threw the election was Americans inside America. It was the Koch brothers. It was Goldman Sachs. It's the military industrial complex. It's Silicon Valley. They buy our government. That is who threw the, the election. You know who else threw the election? Oh, my God. There you go. New York City's Board of Elections will admit it purged more than 200,000 voters from city rolls. 200,000. That was in Brooklyn. After many Brooklyn residents arrived at the polls during last year's presidential primary to learn they were deemed ineligible to vote, the good government group Common Cause New York, New York filed suit. State Attorney General Eric Schneiderman and the Brooklyn U.S. Attorney Office joined in the litigation. 200,000 people purged from the rolls in Brooklyn alone. You think that's the only place that happened? By the way, New York City's Board of Elections is acknowledging it broke the law. They were willing to break the law to keep Bernie Sanders from winning. And they did it on a mass scale. They didn't do it on a little scale, mass scale. 
They illegally purged 200,000 people from the voting rolls in Brooklyn. What do you think happened around the country? What do you think happened in Arizona? What do you think happened in California? What do you think happened? Ballots. Many Brooklyn residents who thought they were registered showed up to vote only to find their names were not on the list. We 